No, I just got these cool glasses a friend of ours sent us, and the only rule yeah, is really you can't not. wear them unless it's nighttime. Right, and I'm wearing mine. And but this is to show you we're the real deal. But you can't see, because I'm a ghost. I don't I'm wearing need to them. see. I'm, I'm wearing no. them. God damn it. I have them on, and they're red. <laughs> I yeah. think the blue suits you. It does. It really does. I know. So... As we've, uh, oh, you know what? I'm missing something. What? What Did are you, you missing? Did you take maybe do an announcement of the new magazine while sure. I three beers? Tell okay. them about the new magazine and what they Gosh. could do. The people Gosh. that have been part of the gang for so long. I gotta do everything. <laughs> right? You, you just dumped my water. I'm sorry. It was really hot. It's really I'm hot sorry. water and he dumped it everywhere. Okay, folks, we have a really hot magazine coming up. Um, it has to be wrapped up tomorrow. It has yeah, to be. Sunday's deadline. the cutoff. Tomorrow's the deadline. And I'm printing. I'm going to print them. Tell them how hard we worked this morning to wrap Yes. Uh, but it was good. It's, it, like I said, a love of passion right. and, and your projects you're working on. We have 18 of you folks. Yeah, we lost. We lost a couple. We lost On our list, and you're getting a magazine yeah. very soon. Mister, you need to move to my right. Okay. Because you're to your right. you're not in the frame. <laughs> All right. You're not that? in the frame. How, am I in the frame now? <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes, folks, we're getting ready. Tell them about the magazine, because it's good. It's probably. <laughs> I it's, swear it's to God, if you dump that water one more time. It's going to be one of the best okay. magazines. <laughs> okay. It's going to be the best. This is so epic, so fun. I have had so much laughter. I feel, I feel like it's our child. We don't have any children, but you know, this feels close enough to it. It's a labor of love. So much fun, so much laughter. Um, just so much creativity. I love it. The, the way I would describe what we do is this. Um, it's 30% material, 70% ideas. So when you look at this magazine, 70% of it is our mind. Like this is how our mind operates. When you see, 
what we have to present. It's gonna be exciting. So yeah, I'm done. I'm really done. I'm done. So fun. Mister, here's the mic. Alright. Now. Welcome. Welcome. I need to get a towel because I can't wear tall guy glasses because I can't read. Because I'm fucking blind. But yeah, do you think? I want to introduce him to this first subject while you do that. I have the interest points and propaganda. What is this? 76? No. I want to say it's We've been doing this almost for two years. 78. This is 78. We did 77. That was a great year. That's what my Uncle Johnny used to say. I remember I was sitting down around the family dinner when I was a kid and I used to eat sugar out the sugar shaker. Right. And get just jacked up on it. I, that's all I had for Sunday dinner. Right. My grandfather's uh, weird colored pills out of his tin can and sugar. Okay. And he used to say, he was born in 84, <laughs> okay. and you look off in the distance and say, that was a good year. And now that I'm older, I just see him doing lines of blow and riding motorcycles and fucking like bitches. Like, he says, that was a good year. But now that I'm older, I say, I know why. Right. You know, he was fucking, he was going at it hard. But yeah, it was really hot. It was a good year. McDonald's on the strike again. This time for sexual harassment. Those hire on bonuses don't come cheap. No. You offer me $500. <laughs> Come flip burgers. Right. You might be sucking some dick. <laughs> you know? Scary. Scary. Hey, look, look, man, the one across the street where I work at, right? Mm -hmm. They had to shut it down because they'd be like knockout brawl out fights. <laughs> nobody wanted to work there. So they would offer you $500 just to come work here. Right. And still, you know what? No. But people right. that work there would be like from the ghetto <laughs> and then pull out a shank and just start fighting people. They're fighters. But those God, fights would break out. And then and, right. and people would outrage. I'm like, you know what? Even before the pandemic, I would eat that shit to save my life. Right. Because once I, I was working there, I said, I haven't had McDonald's as a kid and I stopped by. It. A crackhead opened up the drive to window, gave me my fucking, you know, lunch. Yeah. And I was like, this is going to be fun, you know? Trip right. down memory lane. It tasted like dog food. Dog I don't, that's not me. No. And it was so shitty. Right. But, you know, I looked at the crackhead. I'm like, you know, at least she's trying. But right. there is no sense. That fucking shit is, the, it was nasty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the average is, You know what I... Like, I keep thinking about Burger King, yeah. but I won't eat it. You know what I, I really... Eat, that is not me. What I really didn't like about McDonald's was their, um... Their chicken nuggets are bad. They're not good. They got They're one really thing right, good. though. The french fries. The fries are good. <laughs> the the french fries, fries are actually good. Are fucking right. <laughs> right. If I go there, all yeah. I get is the french fries, and if they got that little ice cream, right. a little vanilla ice cream, oh, and then yeah. coffee. Yeah. But okay. you know, I can't have coffee because yeah. I turn into that guy from American Psycho. <laughs> you turn into a rattlesnake. No, I, 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 I get, I would, I would turn psycho. Really? Like, when I drink yeah. coffee, I get so strung up. On edge. I have a little bit at work, but really? I really gotta be careful because I would turn around and like, like I, this shit that comes out of my mouth, I have to go back and say, you know, and I apologize. Right. Yeah. I'm on edge right now. <laughs> Right. <laughs> but, but yeah, I, I can't touch caffeine. I'm always high strung. I don't know why. Very true. Very true. Especially with that full moon, man. I was fucking wicked. I've yep. been looking at people like this. It's scary. Comments. Aliens. Dictatorship. Is it just me and you? Motherfucker. Sooner or later, you've got to learn. This is our world, not theirs. Right. What do you feel about that? Um, about the aliens and, and all that? Oh, well, we got a lot going on now. Right. Like, <sighs> um, and then you mentioned a, like a dictatorship? Yes. Do you know? Yeah. I don't, I don't want to talk too much about the president because I don't know how this shit works. Anymore. I don't, we don't say know. Nothing, so I'm going to choose my words wisely. Sure. Um. Express it yourself. It seems like uh, the, the tighten things up and it's becoming more of a dictatorship. But the thing that bothered me the most, and I don't know if it means anything. 
sure. And I don't mean nothing by it. No. But I, I went, I went to my first store main room, maybe the second store main room, my new boss. He said, you live in a democracy. But when you clock in, he said, you live in a dictatorship and I'm your dictator. <laughs> and I stood there. I don't and think the so. thing is, my blood started boiling. Right. Because you could have called yourself anything. 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 But you mean you're the image of Stalin, Hitler. Right. And he said, you work for this corporation. You're under my dictatorship. And that, I mean, this was verbatim. Mm -hmm. Verbatim. Mm -hmm. What I heard. And, and nothing crawls my skin more. Right. But like I said, I do what you say, but like if you're not looking and you don't see it, it didn't happen, right? Right. So I would have those girls. So what I would have done... Is that what but, it... You know, um, I just... I, it just bothers me. I just never heard somebody come out like that. Now listen to me. He came out as a dictator. But does he even but know he, what the fuck he's saying? Because he, I, right. I wouldn't have said but that he, shit. Because if it... No. If anybody had half stupid. a brain like I would, we would have stomped his ass right there. Right. And that's stupid. Him. That's stupid. But nobody's thinking that because it's sheep. By the way... Um, the way he should have done it is that never wrong. said that he was a dictator. Dictators never say they're dictators. It's a rule. You don't say you're no, a dictator. No, but I don't, don't like, I, you know, but no. so far, so um, good, but I, I'm pretty sure we're going to have problems down the road. But really, I wouldn't, at the point, I don't care. Point, um, Stives enter as poison propaganda, but right. this is what I'm okay. talking about. We're going back to the corporation. Sure. Now, think about it. But... I don't see it working in there. Um, I mean, everywhere you go, people are so zombified right. and just out of it. Okay. I mean, so what I would have done in that they, situation? There's a, there's a, there's a, there's, they're not attached. If I can complete my thought before okay. we talk about the zombified people around us, before we get into that, <laughs> we can put a pin in that. Okay. <laughs> okay, let's make it official with the mic. What I really would have done after he said that he's running a dictatorship is I would have flashed in my tits momentarily. That's what I would have done. And then I would have told him, that's how I take care of your dictatorship. <laughs> that's really how you take care of a dictatorship. Flash your tits because everyone knows that when you see titties, it makes you feel safe. So, you know, when you see titties or babies, like an image of a baby, everybody, everybody relinquishes. They, they set down their weapons, everybody calms down. Because there's two things that take down dictatorships, and it's titties and babies. So, I just wanted you to know that. If you, if you ever want someone to surrender, Show them some tits or show them some babies. And there you go. That's how I would have solved that. Anyway, um... I like it. Yeah, I like I'm it. on the run currently. Yeah, I, yeah what you do? Not you do? taking my medication anymore, as you can tell, because I'm talking about flashing titties. Flash, I, I, I'm not taking mine because <laughs> I did know, flash some titties. You know, I know I'm safe with you, mister. I know Am I'm safe. Am I safe with you? Yeah. We're safe. I um, I keep away the paddy wagon. Um, I allow you an escape route if you have to leave, and you protect me from cult members. Yes, that's a fact. Yeah, you do. I was almost a goat, everyone. I was almost sacrificed in the town square of Ivan. I was almost I was almost com completely sacrificed. It was a it would have been a total like bloodletting is what would have happened. Doing this. And the reason they would have done this, folks, I think it's just to ensure a good cotton harvest or something. Something Bring like that. Bring me that, that cotton. Bring me a bowl. Yeah. Bring me that cotton. Bring me that girl. So we gonna get down tonight. <laughs> okay, we get it. We get it. <laughs> Calm down. You know, you saved me from getting sacrificed, and I save you from going to the mental ward because they don't Thank understand you. you. Thank you. Because they came very close. They if don't understand her, you. They would have chunked me in that meat locker for the third time. Folks, it's actually true because they don't understand him because he's half alien. But 
But tell tell him if he was to live with me, how much work am I gonna do? Tell him I stay up all night. But all he ever I does is work. That's all we ever do. Always. I'm we just are trying maniacs. To, I'm trying to please you guys. <laughs> That's people. all we're doing. And nobody wants. Nobody's <laughs> happy. Nobody's happy. You know who but is? But I continue until I reach the honey <laughs> You know who is happy though? Who? People like Marco or Daniel, yeah, they're well, ride or die. You know what? They're good fans. That's all I need. We got a few no, fans. No, no, that's all I need. That are ride or die. I got, I got, I got my little you know? crew, and we, we all got Mark each other, and I listen to them, and they give me suggestions, and we, we talk got, about life. Yeah. That's all I need. I don't need a fucking no. My little, my little crew. Right. Our little crew. Yeah. Is. Yeah. You know, is special. He sent so many nice things, by the way. Marco did. He sent no, us a survival uh, package. Of, yeah, very Like, fun. I listen to what they say because I know I'm very talking fun. to intelligent people and I don't, you know. But they actually have love and a lot of people pretend. But, right, I know. No, uh, those, those people don't, you know. Oh, so. No, no, no. Shout no, out to my gang. Right, now, I love you. not Daniel. You know, I'm sure. You know, Mark, Marco. Yeah. You know, we got something very special right. coming to you. Yeah. You know, Denicio, Mark, Denicio and Jennifer. Denicio is my boy, man. Right. I love Denicio. He's, yeah. he's one of the most sweetest guys I've ever known. Good people. Very smart. Really good people. We got good yeah, people. Yeah, dude. I only, I only, really I only, I only, I only stick with good yeah. people. And, very you know, I, I, I have a reputation for being an asshole and a dick, but you ask any of them, they would say otherwise. Right. And that's why I love them, because we ride or die. <laughs> and you're gonna love the magazine. We got going. It, it's so it, fun. It, it's really over. The I'm time. really. We <laughs> really went all out. On this yeah, one. we did. Like we went all out. It's on so this funny. One. It's gonna be great. We got some. You know, there's gonna be familiar faces, folks. You're gonna see familiar faces in the magazine. Really, it's rocking. It's popping. It is, it's it is it's popping, popping like a it really is. It's popping like your fun. mother's 19-year-old vagina. It's popping. And like, oh, by the way, now that you mention it, when we called my mom earlier, and yeah, we, we were thought, talking we to her, your mom and dad. You dude, said, we, dude, we get up right? on Saturday morning. Well, I was pop out of bed at yeah. three, and we really started day early. You're so right. We do our so, things, but you gotta think. I just did some edibles and had some drinks. And, and but I said I haven't talked to your family. The, so we talked to them. The jokes were endless. The thing the is, jokes were fucking when endless. you were talking, when you and I were talking to her, she was on speakerphone, and you said, "I just wanted to hear your beautiful voice." Like that's what you told her. And I said, "Uh, okay, you know she's married, right?" <laughs> like that's how yeah, I was. Man. That's how I was joking, and she was laughing so hard. Yeah, was, uh, Nobody knows why she was laughing. It was, but we it was do. a great conversation. And then you. I said to you, um, because. Well, you know, I can say this. I can say this, folks. My mother, she was di diagnosed with a uterine cancer. Luckily, um, it was like slow progressing, and when it's caught early, if they treat it, it it's not likely to spread. So, anyway, long story short, she had to have her uterus removed, and she's fine now. Perfectly fine. She's healthy. Now, she was talking about this to David and I today, just giving us the details and what she went through and all that, the whole process, and then, <laughs> and then I made the joke, I said, yeah, David heard you got your uterus removed and he decided to move right in. <laughs> it's so funny, she laughed so hard, and no one will know why she laughed, but I we know, know, I know, we I know. laugh it just as hard, because and it's right, funny right. because my sister, she'll ask me, like, you know, why is mom laughing so hard? Like, what? Like, she's like, what did you do? She wants to know. She'll ask me that. But we just talk crazy shit to this woman. We do. We laugh. We joke incessantly. We turn everything she's into so a joke. Funny. She, I love her. But, man, I haven't talked so to her sweet. so long. I just made it a point. I didn't I call him, but I got to right. talk to your mother and your father. I haven't... And we had a great conversation. That's he the longest happy. I ever heard anyone yeah. on the phone. He usually don't like to talk on the phone. Mm -mm. But yeah, he sounded really good. He's, yeah, he, he is. And he, he, it, it sounded like he was happy to hear about you driving. Yeah. He, um, he always stays busy. This man will go insane if he's not doing something. Yeah. He's that kind of person. Well, I right? agree. 
because you know, like special, like I, like I work all week, it's always go, 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 and you know, I'm always trying to, do, you know, I don't have time to do the things I want to, you know, I used to be able to have time, I don't know what's different, but it's just, I'm so mentally exhausted. That's what happens. But you when the weekend week. comes, okay. I have to fit everything into a few hours, so I learn to do things fast. That's right. But the thing is, I'm still working, but when, I, like Saturday, I'm walking around the house, I don't know how to relax. I have to be doing something. And, right. and but you gotta really pull yourself off to the side. I get. Yeah. But the thing is, you gotta make yourself sit down. Sometimes you have to. And right. like you said, turn turn off everything. Right. And you know that's where the writing comes in. But then I'm I, I'm working again. But but for some reason, you know, it's different. Yeah. But I just I, I it's, it's hard for me to turn it off. Yeah. I get really nervous if I stay in one place for too long. I have to be doing but something. I feel like I gotta be doing something yeah. all the time. But it's just a, it's just a, I guess a mental um, thing because at work you gotta right. like this. Yeah. So when I'm off, I, it's like a mental thing that's been attached to where like, right. no, no, you gotta get up, get up, get up, go. You gotta <laughs> go over here, get over But but I don't mind that. No. But it's just scrambled because right. I gotta get that their rules out of me. Right. I gotta get back to my world. Mm -hmm. And in order to do that, I gotta toxify myself. Right. Do you understand? I get it. No, that makes sense. Because I gotta erase that. But you it know, it, take, it, take, it takes sure. sometimes hours, hours to get that mindset out of me. Right. But I, then on Monday morning, I gotta relearn it. You know, but it's just being two different type of people. And it's so, I, I wanna, as soon as I can cut that out of my life, <laughs> yeah. that leech. Yeah, yeah. I will be a better person. Right. And and I also I've gotten more comfortable with my driving, I think, just no, because no, you did beautiful. Thank you. you <laughs> Thank no, you. No, your driving is exceptional. He has so been good. my teacher. You're, you're, you're yes. doing really good. And uh, you ta you taking those turns. I was so the reason why I'm so happy with it now, I figured out why. It's because I feel more helpful. But I like just I like driving you around. <laughs> no, but I just I just want you to I do. feel it. Yeah. And, you know, when you're ready to take the right. next jump, you you gotta let me know. Yeah. But we saved the parallel parking for yeah. last. And the other thing is I can do I can I can do, I can you know focus on something, direct my attention into into driving, and I I like that. Yeah. Because like I said, I get ner I get nervous if I'm not doing something. Yeah, so so I kind of I like that. Now you're in the That's little nice. town. Yeah. Then we'll move to like to the, the outs not no. outside <laughs> right. the city. Sure. You know? yeah. We'll stop. We'll maybe Definitely. We'll creep in. Right, yeah. You gotta creep in. Kinda merge. <laughs> I know all I know every road right in, in this place. I know every road. Same. I don't need nothing. Um, I know I know how to get anywhere. Yeah, but I can take you, you you kinda just start out on the outside, you just creep in. But right, I'm right. telling you these people don't know how to drive. No, they don't. Here. That's what scares me. I don't even like driving in the city. These people are My defense of driving was good. No, that's Even what I good. like. That's yeah. what you... You gotta be defensive. Right. You gotta be um, willing to... Yeah. But, yeah, I saw that. Because some fucker came around the curve and he's in our lane and you didn't freak out. You went no, just around just slightly and, move and around. back in the lane. That's all. And that's I'm, I'm surprised at how that calm fucking, I've been. No, you, you really won my heart on that. That's when I knew you was good. Yeah. You, you that That's defensive driving. Yeah. Because you was paying attention. And I'm so calm. Yeah. I can't believe that. And don't play me fucking phone. No, don't oh fuck no. With the radio. Do you know I don't you even send the radio phone. where you want it and drive. The thing is, is because I have you with me, I just let you handle your phone. I don't even bring my phone with me. No, There's the no thing place is, for is, it. No, you know? when you're driving, you, yeah. you focus on that fucking right. road. Right. Yeah. Also. Because you gotta think. You're traveling at a speed. I know it's fun, and you feel like you, you know, it's this. Right. Right. But you gotta remember how fast you're going. Within a second, mm -hmm. anything can happen and you would die. It happens fast. You know, if really you look fast. down to touch the radio, by the time you look up, you have a fuck you. And no, you're that'd done. be a truck right now. You could be done for it. Right. You're done. Um, so that's why I said, you got to focus. Yeah, you I do. you driving serious. And I know that from experience. Right. I almost died 11 yeah. times. And right. probably about 10 of those were car crashes. Not all of them because of me, but I just happened to be in a car mm -hmm. and we were stupid kids. Right. No, I've, I've, I've crawled out of a fucking hospital, half dead, and got a bone in my feet. Oh. Eleven times. Also, by the way, I'd like to... It's not to be proud of, but... Mr. Okay, 
I but like, I'm telling you, I you need to it dial it down. Why We're taking it serious. It we gotta dial it down. You know why? Because we're about to have another moment of silence for the crazy women drivers. Okay. Moment of silence. Okay. All right. You know, nobody ever thinks about them, but I do. <laughs> we do. We think about can, them. Can I have a moment of silence? I've been thinking about them. Sure. Okay. Okay. Are you gonna be all right? Can I have a moment of silence? Sure. Poor women with eight cents. <laughs> I know it's hard out there with them sandbags weighing you down, but I just want you to know. It's like you're dipping your tea and your nipple at the same time. It's hard work. But we love you. Great. And we'll send you flowers every Tuesday on yeah, that wasn't the 16th a, of February. That wasn't a moment of silence. You kept talking. <laughs> that was not a moment of silence, but oh, I have right now. <laughs> okay. All right. I saw them and I was scared. I saw those tits and I'm scared. Um, yeah, okay. Let me tell you I something. know what you mean. Like Let women me with tell you something. Scared. Look, you, want me, you want me to share a real truthful secret? I'm um, sure, okay. When I was growing up as a child, right. in these Mill Hill houses, like you know where the mill is? I know where this is going. As a kid, let me tell you something. Grandma, and I knew my great grandmas. Yes. You know when they'd walk through the room and make biscuits? Right. They did not, if they was in the middle of the gym, they would walk around with their fucking tits hanging out. I'm <laughs> say, the biggest, meatiest tits you've ever right. seen. Yeah. And they would hang. Yeah. <laughs> and you'd be like, yeah. the biggest, I've seen the biggest titties. Yeah. <laughs> and they just walk by like, right. hey baby. And you'd be sitting there like, and you didn't know how to feel, but you're like, she said, like, you want some biscuits? And you're like, yeah. And she'll make you some biscuits. So the titties hanging out, and then go back in the room. That's the morning. Right, right. When you skip school. <laughs> okay. But guess what? It was so natural. But yeah. that, but these are, I mean, these are people that came over here. You know, right, like, yeah. they, I mean, it's still old school. It was just. Strong work ethic. Strong. Things. I mean, it was just. Worked in the middle. It was just, thing. it was a dip. It right. was like. This is early. Like they things. said, they had their own currency, like vouchers yeah. and such, and, right? Okay. But let me tell you about those biscuits. Mm hmm The best biscuits I've ever ate put in my mouth while right. watching Bad Luck was a woman wearing a now, shirt. No, actually. And that was my, dude, my grandmother would have, my belle would have right. her titties out making sure. biscuits. But it was so <laughs> normal, it wasn't weird. Right. But let me tell you about them biscuits. Yeah, good. You made me skip yeah. school almost <laughs> every day. Because oh. they was, I've never had them so right. good. Oh, that, oh. Now. Oh, she could cook. Now, uh, now. I love that woman, man. She taught me, uh, yeah. she taught, she, she's who got me into writing. Um, yes. She got me in, she, she used to tell me vocabulary is very important. It is. And she taught me my vocabulary. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she's, she's the reason I got into books. Now, um, in, in a lot of those mill villages, to start out with, a lot of them were little more than tents. Well, see, that that's my other side of the family. Right. Um, my dad's side of the family was actually in the mill hill. Mm -hmm. My mother's side of the family owned slaves. Um, but right. where I come from, um, Tommy, which is, has my name, right. David Graham. Um, that's my hero, but, I mean, he came from hard hard knocks. Mm -hmm. hard, like, like you're going to kill somebody just to get to school, but yep. then you don't even go to school, you just go to work when, I mean, as a child. Yeah. But he was, he was a very interesting man. Yes. And the thing is, what surprised me is, I didn't realize how people thought he wasn't intelligent when we would be on the boat. The things he told me, I, and I won't repeat him to this day. No, no, no. No, he was highly yeah, yeah, he was. <laughs> but he, he, he only uh, told me that he wanted me to know these secrets. 
see. Right. I mean, he was almost but more than human. Is, is it I mean, he's strange. Me how, how people think he was, but that he is not what. No, the way I understand him, the the way I intuit who he was, he was almost more than human. There was something no, different he, about he, him. He, different. He, no, no, no. That, that is that's that's my man. <laughs> yeah. And I would never go. I would never go. Like X-ray vision. I mean, that uh, literally no. would look right through you. <laughs> no, he raised me. But mm. the lessons he taught me was so. Right. St it was a stoic philosophy. That's that's. I think that was my first philosopher. Right. That was yeah, my first definitely. philosophy. That makes sense. Now I know. I answered my own question because earlier I said I don't remember who was my. That was my first one. Did you know? I was on a boat. He would drive out in a boat and he would tell me about life. That Mister, was my first one. Mister, did you know that in astrology? His sun sign would have fallen under Sagittarius, and those are considered the ones of wisdom. So he was the, the philosopher. Would, Think about it. I answered my yeah. own question today. He I'm was. happy. <laughs> you remember when I was in the kitchen and we was talking? I said, I, will, I can't remember because we love philosophy. That's how we met. Yeah, Psychology, philosophy, philosophy, psychology. We, 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 this is what we said around talking about. It. But I said, I can't. I was trying to think of the first, my favorite first one. Right. And, and I music. couldn't think about it. And music, too. And I, but I couldn't think of it. But I just asked him. It him. was him. Yeah. That's great. I, I'm, I'm, I'm fulfilled now. You're right. He was my first philosopher. That's what got me into it. Yep. And he would tell me the wise things. Wise ones. No, he would, just the things he would tell me. And, and he would tell me about things that he would do. He'd always ask me because I didn't want to be in baseball. He said, you hit a home yeah, Every day you want to know if I hit a home run. Yeah. No, it but right. Yeah. It, it, yeah, but but the thing is, he knew I didn't really want to play baseball. Yeah. But you know what he did? He built me a basketball court. Mm -hmm. You know what I like? Yeah. I like the game of basketball. But the thing I like is, basketball. Is, the yeah. thing is, is I never said it, but he he liked how I. But once he he built a whole concrete court with a basketball goal just for me and he would give me as many cups of coffee and grapefruit as I could take and he would unleash me on it with a basketball and he liked to what but I like I like basketball I didn't like baseball mm -hmm. I didn't like somebody I throwing a basketball. ball at me I really but I like basketball because it's, it's more of a mental game it, it, it is you know, I like I like it because it's, it's more is. mental, right. and I like to shoot. Yeah. And he built a basketball court. He had a pool for me. Mm -hmm. I love that man. Yeah. But the thing is, is Very when I was young, he was a little wild, and I didn't realize he was actually drunk. Oh, uh, the they are. Um, <laughs> the the thing is, if you want to look at it from the astrological perspective, if you just want to go strictly by his sun sign, most of those people. Um, who are Sagittarius, they start out, um, yeah, high strong, they can start out high strong. The other thing about them is, I said, that temper, that temper is explosive. Yeah. <laughs> okay, problem. now when they're young, they can be, they can be assholes, okay, but they're starting out. And they're not, they're not going to be so wise when they're young, of course, but as they age, they tend to become wiser. That's characteristic of that sign. They do. They, they get better as they get older. You had a game today. I do. No, no, wait. I'm not I do. Done yet. Okay. I was just wondering. Sure. Okay. I knew it was well, you want this back then? Oh no, I knew it was just kind of. Mister, you want this back? No. Yeah. Well, I don't know. I just had this last base. I don't know what this is. I don't even want to pollute your mind with the news. Any questions? I got answers. Get me up in the feed. Kendra, if there's anything on your mind you want to ask me any curious questions, I'm open. <laughs> okay. For anything. Open for anything. Anything, and I will be 100% honest. Any question. Right. So, one of the things I wanted to talk to you about, and this is an interesting concept, and I hope I don't sound awkward, and I hope it doesn't sound stupid when I try to explain this. Kind of goes back to a little game that you may have played when you were a kid, possibly in class. Um, the teacher might give you something to look at for a few seconds, and then it goes away. And then you have to write down what you think you saw? Yeah. Like that? Okay. 
Well, what fascinates me is... Like I said, I don't want to sound stupid, but let me try to explain this so that you understand it. Now, I'm looking at you right now, okay? And I see everything, you, everything in this room right now, in front of me. Now, when I close my eyes, think about that. Close your eyes. You're looking at me and then close your eyes. How much detail do you actually remember? How much can you recreate in your mind? But how much of it can you actually okay. visualize in your head when you close your eyes? I mean, what else is there? You're just wearing this black and rose dress. What else is in the room that you saw? Uh, there's a camera sitting on top of a cage. Okay. There's another cage to the right. Right. Sitting on a white and brown chair. Right. To the left of me, the kitchen lights on. Right. So you can open your eyes now. <laughs> you can open your now, eyes. The kitchen light was not on. No, it wasn't on. See? That was one thing. But that's interesting. But that's because that light. So if you do little exercises like that and you ask yourself, yeah, was, how was, much was, detail was, was, do you actually remember? Right. right, when you close your eyes, how much detail did you actually could you actually visualize while you had your eyes closed? It goes to show you that most of what we experience, we don't remember very well. I, I but remember, I know I, I do. I, I, I remember it very well. <laughs> but I, yeah, so it's funny. So think about that. When you go to sleep each night, it's if you think about it, when you dream, you're going into another reality. You're leaving this behind. But how much of this do you even remember, even in a dream? Have you ever had a dream where you wake up? And you think you're awake, but you're still dreaming, and you're in your house, and everything kind of looks oh. normal, but there's some, no, something no. not right. Like no, there's no, something this out of place. Back to that dream I told you about. Sure. You remember I told you? <clears throat> Here. Because you, you remember I told you about that dream that happened during the week? Because I uh, Wednesday was bad. It was full moon. I, I I have a problem it's during the full moon. I don't sleep. Mm -hmm. And, but the next night, I, I slept really good, but I fell in this dream. Yeah. Where it was this old house, like the King house, and me and my mother's there was our state, I guess, we was looking at it, and we needed to get in there. Right. And I was trying to climb this tree, but every day it was rotten, and it was breaking. Every time I jumped up, I was trying to climb the tree to get to a window to get inside to let her in. But everything was decaying. Every time I grabbed a branch, it would break. Every time I grabbed something, it would break. Mm -hmm. and then she walked across this cobblestone path to a front door mm -hmm. and opened the door, and we turned around and laughed at each other because I said, oh. Right. <laughs> right. But we went inside. But when we went inside, it was a mansion. Right. And we was walking around looking around because, you know, we were just look, it was, we was looking through the house because I think we was going to sell it. Right. And as we was walking through, we heard people talk. Well, first, no, before that, we went in this room and my mother screamed. Oh, and there okay. was a black dog that jumped out. And it was growling and, like, attacking. Oh. And I walked up and I kicked it in the face as hard as I could. Right. And, like, I was beating the shit out of it. Yeah. And it sat down and then it was whimpering, but yeah. I noticed it had a chain on it, so this is somebody's dog. Yeah. I beat him into a submission. Right. But we heard somebody talking, and I told him, and we walked, but I went ahead, yeah. and I walked up, and it was just two blonde women just laughing. Right. It was chunky, just laughing and talking, sassy, and I walked up to him, and I went, Hoy! Yeah, okay. And that's when I woke you up. Right. Because I did that. Yeah. I yelled, right. and I woke myself up. Right. But I thought, what if that was, I was somewhere else and that was actually happening? Yeah, it's possible. I think it is possible. Certainly. But I woke up from that dream, but it's weird because that, that dream sticks with me. Yeah. Still. Because right. I yelled at him. Right. And then I woke up, and that's when he said, why are you, why are you yelling? And he sleep, and I just woke up. Right. Yeah. But I wanted yeah. to scare him. Right. So they would leave my house. Mm -hmm. 
But that, 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 uh, that, that makes me curious. Right. Where I've had, I've had dreams where I wake up in this house and everything seems, like to me, it seems normal. But looking back on it, there were certain details that didn't fit, right? That just didn't fit with the house at all. But isn't it funny that while you're in the dream, mentally you accept all of this as normal? You're accepting everything you see as normal, but when you wake up, you're like, wait a minute, that's not in the house. That wasn't right. So it kind of makes me wonder. That dog don't hunt. Right. <laughs> it kind of makes me wonder. It, question, it does make me question what, how much of this is, is really, um, how would I describe it? Are Would you say that maybe, yeah, or there's simultaneously other realities functioning all at the same time? Like, I wonder about that. That there, there may be separate realities all operating interchangeably. The maybe it, it operates but, you know, that's a hard conversation to have with yeah. anybody. Because <laughs> if you sit down with somebody right. in the break room and be like, hey, what about okay. these simultaneous... Um, episodes and realities and what, hey, what are you doing? Come back! But yeah, like I said, that little exercise of closing your eyes yeah. and asking yourself how much detail can you recall of what yeah. you saw, it goes to show you that most of your reality you don't even remember very well. It's hard for you to even cognitively recall what you saw. So that, if, like if you said, think about it, your life is there's a method very my, fragile. <laughs> there's a method to my madness. Yeah. And without a queen, I would have no way. Without a queen. Without a queen. Okay. If I was self-doubt, she picks me up and puts my lips on her suckle tip and feeds me in mercy. Wow. Who's that? You! <laughs> me. That you is. Know that sounds what like me. That sounds like me. I mean, <laughs> I tell people I am a mom by nature. I am. That's why when I was driving you, I'm like, you're not. Man, you you're did not some incredible driving. Buckled your driving in. Skills are I said you need to you buckle so in. Quick. You right. really were driving. I'm glad. I really like it. <laughs> I take no, it no, seriously. You, I mean, I do. You, you've really picked up quick. Like, your turning has improved so much. Yeah. Because that was what I was worried about. Right, right. Turning. But, yeah, the stopping and going, you, you've improved on all that. Yeah. You, you're you're going to do good. Thank you. Yeah. No, yeah, I was <laughs> impressed. You. You're, you're really getting it. Thank you for being my teacher. Because I was able to just relax. Yeah. Instead of That's good. <laughs> Aww. And I was like this. <laughs> yeah, it was cool because, you know, you was getting all the right moves. We got the but, game. Huh? We got the game. Let's do it again. I'm looking at the time and I don't want to. I just don't want to overdo it. Okay. All right. Okay. 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 All right. I'm now, sorry, I didn't I didn't want to make... Like no, it doesn't. Not at all. Um, I didn't want to... Okay, it kind of does smell like beer, but... <laughs> um... I, I don't want to overdo it. I don't want to go over the time, really. So I've limited this game a bit. Cut it down to size. I didn't, I didn't have to, but I just decided to. <laughs> just because I want to demonstrate the mercy you were talking <laughs> about. Okay, this is the wildflower of youth. <laughs> you meet a wildflower. Okay, you might want to turn that down just a little bit. Just a little bit because I'm not very loud. I'm not, right. I'm not a generally loud person. And I have to read this. And I don't want to sound like I'm shouting, okay? Okay. Okay, we get it. Okay. I'm gonna take a drink of water here for a moment. Is that better? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> I hope I don't get pink eye. What? From what? <clears throat> Look at me, man. I'm like fucking... Clearing my throat here, because I'm about to read. Okay. All right. So you find a wildflower. It says, so, you 
mr r a semi functional addict namely heroin namely heroin sit still like you you start wandering around as soon as i start reading and i'm sick of it so you better stay right there okay okay so you're a semi functional addict uh like i said namely heroin Honey, set that down, please, okay? If you're gonna be rude, I'm gonna stop, okay? <laughs> you know, we're, we're having a good episode here, and I really don't no, want no, to that's, sully that's the mood. You were 27. Oh, that's a good year. Put you into this reality. You were 27. You have an incredibly headstrong young woman stumble into your life, yeah, no. whom almost no one can keep around. She was a Puerto Rican, wasn't she? No, 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 not this one. We will call her Faye. You don't know her. This is just a separate reality I put you in, <laughs> by the way, okay? We will call her Faye. With a strong sense of morals and conviction, she's not falling for anyone's bullshit. It seems like you're the last person to catch her attention, so how will you handle this one? And the way we're going to go about this, mister, you'll have to pick a number between one through four, and that's going to determine how you two meet, how you first interact. I'm three. So how you first interact is I'm what? Three. three. That's what we'll determine. Curiosity. You're in a waiting room when you glance over at a book in the seat next to you. Out of curiosity, you pick it up and start reading it. Soon after is when you meet Faye. She tells you that's my book, but she's not upset about you reading it. You hand it back to her, wondering what the odds were someone would turn up with Plato's Republic. Nobody oh, reads anymore. Man. That's a great book. Yeah, nobody reads anymore. No, All right. Oh, yeah. they should. So, <laughs> that's a good option. Do you want to know what the other options were? Yeah. So, curiosity yeah. is what got her attention. Yeah, let's see. Let's see what you were curious about. about her book. That's how you oh, went. The way. <clears throat> One would be generosity, if you picked generosity. She finds you giving away money to a man and his daughter. When you notice her standing a few feet away from you, watching what you're doing, you tell her, I don't got shit for you. I gave away the last of what I had. Her reaction is what stuck with you, however. She simply stared you down coolly, with not a word to impart until you walked away. She seemed cold as ice. Later, when she runs into you again at the store, she sets down a $20 bill on the counter to pay for your food, since you were rummaging through what little pocket change you had. The funny thing is, the food wasn't for you anyway. You have no appetite. Man, so me, there you go. Let me tell you, you know, you know where I learned my compassion from? Mm -hmm. My grandmother, Marvell. You know, I used to skip school when they go, like, to get groceries. I did it yeah. all the time. On grocery day, sure. I would say I was sick, and I would go, and we go to Publix on grocery day. Yeah. My grandfather would get, like, you know how you get grapes in the back? Right, By the time right. he got up front, he had eight and a half the back. <laughs> but he was a war too. But, mm -hmm. dude, he was, he was the smoothest motherfucker. He was yeah, bad. But they he were. Was less. <laughs> but he were. said he didn't give a fuck. But, you know, they went to the nicest store. Right. And I loved going there with them. And I would have no shirt, no shoes, ripped up jeans. I look like a little animal. Yeah. But he would let nobody say nothing about it. No. No, no. 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 Because I was that boy. I mean, they really had real love. Mm -hmm. Cause, but I was wild, you know. But I mean, I would have, like, all I had on me was just ripped up jeans. Oh. <laughs> Barefooted. Like, just a little dirty boy. Mm -hmm. And... And, like, they'd be damned if you say I couldn't go in there. Right. And he wouldn't have it, but no. I remember it was so fun. Mm -hmm. Now, um... Oh, uh, yeah, man. So, generosity, that would be 
one if you picked one and two is manners um apparently the day you first encounter Faye, she's being hit on by nearly five dudes at a friend's party what? he's an egomaniacal asshole but you're just there for the drugs anyway you happen to win her attention since you were the only one who made no effort to even so much as talk to her. She sat beside you, shyly running her hand through her hair, while you pulled down your shirt sleeves to hide your arms. You're a savage, but you still have manners. So, you just didn't talk to her. That's why she sat next to you, because everybody else was hitting on her. Giving her the creeps, you know? Um, the last one, if you picked four, is restraint. So how you meet Faye is through a phone call. She happens, she happens to know your brother, and today she was forced to call you to come help him move. Mister, you seem distracted. Okay, you're distracted. Yeah. So that's how you meet her. She calls you up. She was forced to call you. Okay? To um, help your brother move. Okay? And you were right about to shoot up as she called when you, <laughs> yeah, when you ask her who she is, Faye tells you, the person who doesn't want to be here right now, and you laugh. You don't even have to ask why. <laughs> okay? Yeah, she's not happy. She was forced to call you. She doesn't know who you are, but you are the brother. It sounds like a bitch. And you gotta go and... <laughs> no, <laughs> the bitch is your brother. Your brother who made her yeah, no, call no, you. Yeah. <laughs> so, and you were right about to shoot up as she called, and you're like, okay. But she made you laugh, because she's like, yeah, I'm the one who doesn't want to be here. So, okay. Now, moving on, you picked Curiosity 3, so let me explain your choice here. Um, it says, your boundless curiosity and probable lack of inhibition is what hooked this young lady in. You apologized for picking up her book, but immediately explained that you'd been wanting to read it for some time. She almost seemed just as surprised as you that someone even showed interest in the book. Faye offers you to borrow it, which in your world is one of the greatest gifts anyone could give you. Um, you. Anyone who takes your focus away from the mundane has a gold star in your book. What Faye doesn't know yet is you're a whole other read entirely. But perhaps she had to meet you in this way. Yeah, because you got a story too. Because you're an addict. But there's more to you than just that. Um, you want to read the other? So that's that's that. So it seems like your your curiosity is your best quality there. Would you agree with that? No, I, I wish this could last forever. Are you yes. being sarcastic? No, no. Oh, yes, okay. Yes. I, okay. <laughs> I know you're really limited on time, but right. I can listen to this all day. I'm really okay. listening. I don't understand. Okay. Um, now, you want to know the other explanations for the other choices? Yeah. They're not that long. Okay. One, if you pick generosity. Your generosity... Um, let's see. Let me make sure I'm not rereading anything. Okay. Your generosity is ultimately what got Faye's attention. In spite of your overbearing drug habit, you have enough sensibility to stop for someone in need, which sets you apart from most addicts. If only she knew the true reason for why you give so freely. It's to do what God can't do. You maintain the strong belief that you're here to demonstrate mercy and nothing more. Your purpose and devotion is what resonates with this lady the most. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't stop to think about that. Especially if they hear that, you know, you might be an addict or whatever. They, they, it already tar, like, it, it tarnishes their perception. Well, no, perception. what you got to understand is 
no matter what position you're in, everybody is an addict of something. Mm -hmm. That's right. We all something. are. Something. We all are. Something. Yeah. But food, any, even hot water <laughs> no, can be no, an addiction, but right? Is, is what you gotta do is you, you can't let anybody tell you what you should consume. You should listen no. to your own body. Right. But, you know, I, 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 I've been trying to eat healthier, and it's made a difference in my life. Right. And I'm not the healthiest person, but I'm striving for it, mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, well, we And I'm getting are. better at it every day. Right. You know, I, I mean, some days I might eat, like, a... The thing is, um, I'm, I'm a wild man, right. but, you know, I've really changed my diet and right. living with you, and you got me into vegetable yeah, diet. Yeah, yeah. It's really, it's really helped me, you know? Right. I actually enjoy it now. Yeah, and every now and then I'll make a no-no where, like, I, I eat a sweet that has, like, 42 no, grams of sugar is, in it. No, the feel thing is, I've actually got into but, where I just want a sandwich instead okay. of vegetables, you know? I yeah. don't want no, like, that's I haven't got I mean. into that. Um, but, you know, that's the way it is, but I don't trust the, any fast food or anything. I like, the other explanation, I like too, if you pick manners, it says, it's not something you see often in this day and age, but your manners are definitely what caught Faye's attention. You're not trying to get up anyone's skirt right now anyway. You got an itch, but it's not that kind of itch. Even so, you're able to strike up an otherwise delightful conversation with this woman, despite feeling like shit. You made her smile, and that's a good start. She knows you're a mess, but you're a silly mess. So that's nice. <laughs> and last one. Okay, last one is... Restraint, let's see. Your, um, your self-restraint is responsible for your meeting with Faye. You set down the paraphernalia and went to help your brother move. But the actual reason why you agreed to help him is just to meet this woman. Yes, you were moving furniture while battling cold sweats and scratching at yourself. But you met the lady. You looked like shit, but <laughs> Faye was just relieved to see someone help get this buffoon out of here so she can move in. You were relieved to meet someone with attitude because you were starting to wonder if you're the only one. She's passionate and pretty. She also closely matches how you envisioned her to possibly look. Have you ever been in that situation where you've never met someone? but you hear them like on the phone, and then when you actually go to meet them, they look almost exactly like how you envisioned them. I've been there before. Man. I've, d I've been there before. That's I've me. I've heard them on the phone, I'm like, man. Yeah. This is gonna be a hot chick, and it's a dude. <laughs> yeah, man. Right. But that's I don't. I don't like phones. To be no. honest with you, I don't like talking on phones. Yeah. <laughs> and, and I don't like texting you. You know, if we're right. having a conversation, if we're having a conversation, we got free time. Sure. But to be honest with you, I don't give a fuck about phones. I don't want to call you. I don't want to talk on the phone. <laughs> I don't want to text you. I don't want to know you. I just right. don't give a fuck. We know but you. if you got something interesting to say, I, I, I'm in. Right. Like, like, what about it? You mm -hmm. know, but. You know, it might take a while. I'm right. just not in. I, I can't play video games here. I'm just so busy with all this shit. Yeah. I'm living in the real world. Yeah. Everybody seems to be hooked into this shit. I know. The electronics. Right. But we're in the real world. I'm writing. Yeah. And I'm fucking playing. I don't have time for that mm -hmm. shit. And that, and I feel like, like I'm, I'm, I'm not. You know. Yeah, I feel like I'm getting uh, pushed out. I, uh, I was talking but I'm about not this. Like, it's just, that's okay. what we do. All right. you okay. Know? Okay. Well, yeah, it's <laughs> it's <great>. okay. <laughs> All right. Great. We don't need to cry and have hope out of it. No, I'm just saying it. <laughs> it's fine, you know? Like, you, I, it's like I'm an alien. Yeah, but you don't need it. You don't need it if you don't want it. It's okay. Yeah. This is your life. <laughs> hey, fuck you. I still got something. Yeah, this is your life. What do you mean, fuck you? I wasn't, I wasn't closing anything. I wasn't... Why are you telling me fuck you? 
Oh, mister, I think you owe me an apology. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All Have right. I ever read Under the Lamp? I don't think so. I don't recall. No. Are you done with the game? Yeah, I'm done with the game. I really am. Um, here we go. What was the conclusion? The conclusion? Yeah. I already concluded it. I mean, it, unless you want me to, to explain my thoughts on why I came up with that particular game, that narrative, um, it go, it's actually more profound than you think. Um, and let me not mess this up either. I don't want to, no, 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 I want to try to explain, no, so. Well, heroin addiction is something that it's, it's interesting to me because even though I've never done it in this life, for some inexplicable reason, I have had memories of living as an addict in a former life. And I remember some of those, some of the trials and the tribulations of that. I mean, and I detailed that even in the game. You don't have shit. When you're, when all you're thinking about is the next fix, that's all it is. Your, your life is all about that. And, and it's funny because Jim Carroll, he, he compared it to a 9 to 5, which he's right. That becomes your job at that point. I right? wrote a poem about that. Okay, <laughs> that's good. That's good. Um, and the funny thing about it is, when you do actually meet someone who is worthwhile, you know, someone who's got their shit together and you really like them, sometimes that is the one thing that can help you get out of that because sometimes the reason you go into an addiction a drug addiction is you feel like no one cares you feel like there's no one there for you and you're alone in the world so that that is one but it's tough <laughs> because like I said when you don't have money anymore and you're starting out at the bare minimum you feel ashamed you do because you're like I really fucked up I don't have a house or anything <laughs> right you have to learn how to turn your focus from the drug to something worthwhile. So it, it that's really the inspiration that went into that game. And I, I'm gonna quit now because I don't want to ramble. Anyway, I'm done. <laughs> you can you can move on then. Also, by the way, to complete my thought from earlier about the phones, I think it with the unique thing about people like you and Marco and I is we can set it down and then resume our normal life, but a lot of people can't do that. Like, they, it almost becomes a drug, right? <laughs> it becomes a drug no. to some people, and they can't set no. it down it's and resume life. It's 1984. I know. It's really Brainwashing. bizarre. Brainwashing is what it is. Yeah. Okay. Here you go. Yeah, Sorry. Here we go. Hey, hey, hey.
Can I close her so we could we could hear better? How was that? That's really hot. Um, what is going on here with this camera? Okay. <laughs> All right. Before we wrap this up, um, if this is a little disconcerting or disheartening to some of you, um, the way <laughs> the way David talks to me sometimes where he says fuck you i want you to know in advance that i accept him for who he is and i now if you want my opinion i would rather him not talk to me like that i don't talk to him like that however he comes from that old school punk rock generation that's how he is that's just how he is he was born in 84 he's hell on wheels he lives life in the fast lane and he does not give a fuck so I just want you to know, he'll never change. That's how he is. His mother knows, <laughs> okay? So I would I would rather him not talk to me like that, but the, I know that he doesn't really mean any disrespect. There's no disrespect, <laughs> no. If so if you ever wonder why, why does he talk like that? That's him. Can't change him. But that's the beautiful thing about hey. us, is you know, you don't try to change me, no, and I don't try to change you. I so there you go. <laughs> yeah. So it's respect. It's respect. Yeah, you know, heart, long and deep. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Yeah, we get it. <laughs> All right. Let's wrap it up. We're at an hour and six. We're over an hour and six minutes it's here. still going? Yeah, okay. Can so we do another? We're, we're done. Can we do we're another? done. Can we do another? Mr. We're done. Can we do another? Tune in next week. Bitches. <laughs> Tune in next week, bitches. Are you just going to call everyone bitches as you play piano? <laughs> okay. It's very nice. Bitches. <laughs> bitches, I wanna see my All blind you bitches. bitches. Bitches, I wanna see my blind bitches. <laughs> bitches, and a little bit of bitches. Bitches, <laughs> <laughs> tune in next week. Hey, bitches.